Everybody take your Bibles and go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. We're not going verse by verse through the book of John quite yet. Um, we're handling this one a little bit different. So what I'm doing with the book of John is right now, um, he said seven times in the book of John, I am. That's the same title he had back with Moses. So we're, <coughs> we're going to cover this. And uh, when we get done with this, by the way, I am, I am, I am, leading us to not next week, but the week after, Easter Sunday, we're going back and he's going to say, I am the resurrection, I am the life, man. We're going to cover that one on Easter. And by the way, as soon as that's over, you know where we're going? <clears throat> There's eight miracles in the book of John. We're going to cover every one of those eight miracles because we believe there's more miracles that need to happen here. More lives change. A lot of us need that, don't we? So now we're in John chapter 14, and if you want to get a little bit of context, uh, this passage is a beautiful passage that is spoken a lot of times during grieving processes at funerals, that type of thing. John 14 and verse 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. You know why Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled? Because hearts are troubled. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Well, Thomas spoke up and said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? In verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto Father but by me. Jesus, please open your word. Holy Spirit, you're the teacher of this book. So I pray that, Lord, uh, we can get it. We, most of us know this verse. We've heard it before. And I pray today it just takes a different turn for us that we would get some, some, good, uh, some good juice, some good dope for our tank, uh, some good fuel um, in our lives from today's message. Lord, it's been good seeing the I am. And I, Lord, we know you from the past being the I am and even in the future um, who you are going to be. And, but today, I pray today, right here, right now, presently, that we would get the present of the I am, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Amen. Man, uh, <clears throat> this is, I love this verse. Um, I think Terry Hodges loves it more than me. Um, you know, he tattooed it on his arm. Um, because you know, he met Jesus Christ and he started tearing through the book of John and it means everything to him because he now has the way and he knows the truth and he's got spiritual life. And so um, one reason I like this verse so much in, in God's word is because if you say what's the main mission of the church, People go to passages and you can read things. You go to the book of Acts and there's a ton of things. Like there's a whole list. It's hard sometimes to find one passage of scripture in one day reading upon this where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I studied the way out. And I thought, my gosh, you know, people are lost. They need to know the way. And then he's the truth. A lot of people don't know the Bible. God said his word is truth. We live in a culture of lies. Um, and then the third thing he says is he's the life. It'll change your life. I was like, that's it. That's it. It's simply that. It's simply just that. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. I want to cover this today, and I want to do it in a way where, you know, <clears throat> as every story unfolds, every character in a story, a, a character always has a problem, right? Right? And if you don't have a problem, then you don't have a story. That's what every story is, right? There, there, there's a character, and they have some core issue and some problem. And then what they need is they need a guide. They need somebody to come along and guide them. Um, and uh, not a hero, not a hero, but a guide. And I'm, I'm saying that on purpose because it's so, so important. And it's funny because if you really look at this, like most even superheroes in the movies, they're troubled people. They're troubled themselves. They have issues. They can't keep their head on straight. <clears throat> they're messed up. Even a lot of the superheroes that we know, DC or Marvel, they're jacked up people. 
and Batman don't have any parents, and he's an orphan, and yet he wants to be a hero. But he's got an Alfred that keeps him together. Every hero needs a guide. So people that have a problem, what they need, they need is a guide. And what a guide does is a guide provides literally just a simple plan. And here's the simple plan. You can do it. And here's what success is going to look like. Or you got, you got a will. You don't have to do this. And here's how your sucky life's going to be. It, it's that simple. So there, there's got to be some stakes, right? I believe this to be true. I believe this is where we're kind of messing up as a church. So I believe every story in everybody's life, people have problems and they need a guide. Do you guys remember Acts chapter 8 and verse 29 and verse 30? There was a guy, an Ethiopian eunuch, reading the Bible. <coughs> God supernaturally lifted up Philip and took him there. Philip ran to this chariot and said, do you understand what you're reading? This guy's reading scripture. He's looking for some real answers, right? Because he don't know the way. He's lived a life that wasn't filled with truth. He don't have any spiritual life. And he asked, do you understand what you're reading? And he goes, how can I except some man guide me? And Philip became the guide that day and said, let me explain it to you. And there at that passage of scripture, he preached to him Jesus. That eunuch, that Ethiopian eunuch got saved that day. And then we see his baptism take place. His life forever changed because a guide came in. I like the book of Proverbs. And one of my favorite Proverbs has always been Proverbs 29, 18. And it just says, you know, without vision, people, what? They perish. People that do not have a guide, they end up licking the toilet, man. I'm just telling you. That's probably a bad analogy. The only reason I say that is my dog. I don't know what it is about that cold toilet bowl. I'm all the time going, get out of here. He don't, he's so little he can't drink the water, so he just licks the cold bowl. And, so, and I tried it. It's not glamorous. Don't do it. So, but this is people's lives. I'm like, you're a, just a dog. You try to feed your dog. I'm eating ribeye the other day, no joke. I mean, you know what I'm doing? I don't give him the fat. I eat the fat off my ribeyes. But if you get a gristly fat that you can't chew, and sometimes I still like, oh, this is good. Boom, I just swallow it anyways, you know. But on the piece I give to my dog, so I'm like, what kind of dog is getting ribeye for lunch, man? This is crazy. What kind of dog are you feeding a dog ribeye? But I'll tell you right now, if you take a rotten piece of fish. If I go out to the lake and he comes with me and there's a dead fish on the bank and flies all over it, he loves that too. Loves it more than the ribeye. Isn't that because he's a dog? That's exactly why. Without vision, people perish. People need a guide. Don't fool yourself. And we live in a day and age today where we got the internet. We can, every one of us can look up things on the internet. You don't even need a college degree. You want to figure that out? Get on the internet, study it, do some things. We all do that, right? Now we're all mechanics and we can be bakers and you're not even very good at it. But, it, you know, it's, a, it's knowledge. We can get knowledge, 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 knowledge. And yet you look at society, look at our culture and look at all the trouble. You would think our problems would be solved by now, wouldn't it? Because somehow we've grown up with this theory of evolution in our mind that things are going to get better and better and better and better. And the story of the Bible says, you are wrong. You have believed a lie. That's not true. You need a guide. Today in our culture, life is terrible in a lot of places. And let me tell you where it starts at, where God started it off. There's too many homes that don't have guides you got parents that don't know if they're on foot or horseback, and then they got little kids. Don't you feel sorry for the kids? Mom and Dan, they can't keep their crap together. Is, is it okay to say crap? Oh, some churches I'd get kicked out, you know, I don't know. So, um, but but, but it, it's ridiculous is what it is. So listen, church, I want to tell you something today. You know what I want to get you, get you uh, us and you and me to get down today? This is so simple, but we're failing miserable. We're, we are so miserably failing because the bottom line is this. Everybody's born into this world in sin. Because of sin, there's a byproduct. And you know what that means? 
Everybody's got problems. And guys, some people, you would look at a privileged little girl and say, they don't have no problems. They don't know what problems are like. You don't know her little heart. When she don't bring home A's, her parents scold her and look down upon her. She cries herself to sleep at night because she's got to turn in homework and she don't know if it's going to be perfect. I'm telling you, she struggles. It's so sad. She's broken. But yet everybody think, oh, they don't know what struggle is. No, your struggle might be different. See, sin always bleeds out in different areas and in different ways. And it usually takes somebody <clears throat> to live life a little bit to go, this is ridiculous. It's not supposed to be this way. Is life really supposed to be this way? How many people really experience peace? How many people do you know that are really, my gosh, they're at peace, man. Then people have joy in their hearts. They're so happy. Most of the people I know, there's, you know they might be sitting on their couch, but they're drinking a, a, a can of chaos, man. Like they can't see straight. The noise is so loud. We're so busy that I can't see. I'm just trying to, we're living. We're surviving. And yet, the Bible, you look at the Bible, you're never supposed to be just a survivor. Why are people happy to just survive? Get by, paying the bills, man. You know, Jesus said once you meet him, your goal is to become more than a conqueror. And yet, people sit back, hey, Christian, I want to tell you, everybody in this room today that knows Jesus Christ, let me tell you right now, Jesus will meet you right in your brokenness. He'll meet you right in that spot. And here's why you are here this morning. Because he don't want you just to be like, he don't want you just to get healing. That's not the point. That's just part of it. He wants you to be a healer. Your goal is to be a guide. People need guided. And you know what we are as a church? We're experts at the human heart. We're experts at relationship. People don't like to think of it, but I'm just telling you, it's absolutely true. And so... When we come to this passage of Scripture here, and it says, Jesus, I'll tell you right now, you know, Thomas is like, I don't know. How do we know the way? Who knows about death, like eternal life? And Jesus said, dude, I am the way. It's me. Guys, it's not empty religion. But people think that, don't they? You know, <clears throat> I literally had a lady say this to me not terribly long ago. And she wants to come to church, and she just says, my gosh, I'm still smoking cigarettes. I'm like, I don't care if you smoke a cigarette and flick it in the church grass. What, what in God's name does that have to do with it? I'm not saying it's a great habit to have, but if you want to start talking habits, we could all lay a few down, can't we? Absolutely. People are lost, man. I'm just telling you, people don't know what's up. You know, one time. Me and a buddy were driving back and forth. We decided, I'm in high school, and I, my mom wasn't for this, but I just took off. We thought, we're going to just, we had money in our pockets, cash, we're going to drive. So we drove four states away. I told my mom, I'll be good, man, I'll be all right. We're coming back and, you know, running out of cash. Times are, and my buddy goes, dude, I'm gonna, you drive for a while, I'm going to jump in the back seat. Well, I entered the border of Ohio. Well, in Ohio, I live up by Cleveland is where I live. And so I remember I drove clear through Ohio. I was supposed to go up right through Columbus and up that way. And then, I, you know, it was half. I was tired, too. So I wasn't paying attention. He was snoring in the back seat. And all of a sudden, the sign came up and it says, Welcome to West Virginia. Like, I just didn't drive 10 minutes out of the way. I didn't miss an exit. I drove two hours at least out of the way. Two hours. And so I was like, oh, crap. But I said something a little bit like that. And I turned around, and I got off, and I got back on. I started looking at a map, no cell phones then. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, i got to get back up. So you know what I did? I drove like 110 miles an hour just so I could get to the correct highway so when he woke up, he could say, oh, man, I made good timing, didn't we? You know, but you know what happened? I'm doing 110 and after a while, man, he popped in the next seat. He goes, dude, why are you going so fast? You know, and I was like, uh, he goes, where are we at? And he started reading the signs as we're passing them. But, you know, the funny thing is, when you go like that and you drive so fast, you miss everything, man. And, guys, I'm telling you, the curse is we've been told we're busy. Every night we're busy. Everybody's busy. We got things to do. Life is this, and we got homework, and we got this, and we got games, and we got that. And I got, and, 
And then if you don't have, and, and people are so stressed, their house is so dirty, but they'd rather sit in a chair and flip like through social media. What are you doing? I'll tell you what you're doing. You're doing cocaine. That's what you're doing. Not, not real cocaine, but that is your drug. It's just keeping you entertained. It's keeping that dopamine to the front of your mind. You're hitting new things and bam, bam, bam. And all of a sudden the night's over and you're like, your house is dirty. Your kitchen's a mess. Your kids are crying going to bed. And as they're going to bed, they told you they had a report due tomorrow. You forgot and they forgot until today. And you're like, you're just not going to have it done. And then your kid's crying in bed, you know. And my mom's like, hey, that's it. We're not doing it tonight. And I was like, that's cool. I didn't want to do it anyway. You know, but my gosh, this is our lives. People, they say mental health is like crazy today. Like everybody's got mental health issues. And it don't help they got labels on everything, you know. If you ever, you ever look at a list of phobias, it's unbelievable. The worst one I ever read the other day was there is a, it's called like, it, it, I don't know how it's exactly pronounced, but it was something like a, a phobia phobia. People that have a phobia of having phobias. I was like, Wow. I, I immediately read that. I was just thought, we are crazy, ain't we? I didn't say they're crazy. I literally said, we're crazy, ain't we? Yeah, totally crazy. We're off. But let me tell you something. The Bible says you can take all the depression, anxiety, put it on somebody. My life's overwhelming. Put that on somebody. You can do that all you want to. And Jesus Christ says, here, here he says this. I am the way. I'm the way. People don't know where they're going. They completely don't know what it's going to look like. They can't see a month ahead of time. I know you just hope to land a job that one day you can retire. You're going to, just, you're going to retire just in time to do dialysis, my friend, twice a week. That's how that works. And you just, I can't wait to retire. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do that. And you got all these great plans. You won't even be able to get down on your knees and do that. Who are you fooling? You bought the lie. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ said, I am the way. Listen to this. Matthew 7 says, wide is the path. Wide is the way that leads to destruction. Narrow is the path that leads to life. Did you realize the majority of people, the majority of people are on a road to destruction? The majority of people, the Bible says, it's a broad way. It's not a good way. The Bible calls this the way of error. It's a way of error. Hebrews 3.10 says, they err in their heart, not knowing my ways. They don't know. Do you realize Jesus Christ is the way? What's beautiful about this, he, and that's why he says, I'll take the rough and make it smooth. Most people have a rough path. Life is not clean. Guys, I, and it's even the pretty people. Don't fool yourself. You look at yourself sometimes and think, man, I know I got problems, but man, that family over there, that family over there is the same as you inside, the exact same as you. Romans 3, 17 says, you know the way of peace? They have not known. They don't know what that's like. What's crazy about this way, Jesus says, I am the way. Did you know you can't find the way on your own? Ain't that crazy? Most people want to be self-sufficient. Do all the digging you want to. Try Read all the self-help books you want to. Listen to all the podcasts you want to. You think you're going to find the way on your own. The Bible says it's not true. The Bible says in Romans eleven thirty three 33 that his ways are past finding out. You won't get it. But it is a prepared way. The Bible speaks of this way being a teachable way. The Bible says we should instruct about the way. You know what that means, church? The way of salvation is what? Maybe I should say that differently. The way of salvation is who? It's Jesus. He is the way of salvation. He says, I am the way. The way is a person. Now, it will put you on a path, but everybody wants to get a path, like a good path going, and reject the person. That's insanity. You need the person of Jesus Christ. And then listen at this. Then whatever path you're on, he's with you. Isn't that beautiful? Even when it's a bad path. He says he'll never leave or forsake. You'll find yourself in a bad spot and say, why? 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 I shouldn't be here. And he'll say, I'm with you. I'm never going to leave you. Gang, Jesus Christ 
is the way. He's the way of peace that want to know. Jesus Christ is the person that everybody needs. But listen, people will not find it on their own. Guess what they need? They need a guide. Guess who the guide is? Billy Graham's dead. Who's the guide? That lady at work that you know is so troubled that you look at her and say, man, that lady is jacked up. That guy that you see at work and you're like, oh, that dude, what a freako. That guy is, you ever think he needs a guide? Oh, he won't listen to anybody. Have you ever tried being his guide? It feels kind of arrogant, don't it? People need it. They so desperately need it. I've always been shocked in public when I correct somebody, whether it's a kid or an adult. I'm usually shocked most of the time I don't get people want to fight me. Most of the time I get thanks. Most of the time I'll get somebody just say, hey, I, even a pharmacist. I had to get onto a pharmacist the other day. When it was my turn at the counter, I said, you quit treating your people like garbage. I've been back here afterwards. She, she caught me. I went to the front door. She had a lady get me and say, hey, the pharmacist wants to talk about mine. She goes, I'm so sorry about it. And you know, what did I say? It's okay. No, that's not okay. You're a very intelligent, smart woman. You're a business lady. Make more money than anybody around here. Treat these people correctly. And you know, she, she probably never forgot it. I, I don't know if I told you this. The lady at the cash register looked at me. But she was ringing me out. The pharmacist now is behind her. She goes, Dang. <laughs> Hey, it don't mean that I'm awesome. But I do know the one that's awesome. And since I've learned his book of truth, I have no trouble. A lot of people don't want to listen to you. I get that too. You're going to guide people. But you know what you do? When this guide comes along and people got a problem, I'll lay out the simple plan that the Bible does. And you know, I'll say, you don't have to listen to me. You can do your own thing. Everyone wants to do their own. Some of your kids will do their own thing. And you know what you say? Then suffer. The problem is when your kid does his own thing and gets bit, the problem is you step in the way. Quit stepping in the way. Let them feel the bite of sin and they need a savior. Guide them. You're not the hero in their story. Parents always intercept that ball. And I'm like, that ball was supposed to be Jesus's. And you ruined it, my friend. Listen, it's, this is super simple. The stakes are there and people don't have to, I'm telling you, if you follow it, I'm, your life will change forever. Hey, I got to show you a couple verses before I move on because I just got hit the way. He's the way. The Bible says in Acts chapter 9 and verse 2. If you're quick in your Bible, go there. Flip a couple pages. Acts chapter 9 in verse 2. Acts chapter 9 and verse 2. And you know what it says? It says, verse 1, And Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples, the Lord went into the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. He could basically arrest these people and put them in prison. Notice what he calls the church. Those people of this way. Jesus Christ is the way. And when you meet Jesus, now you're part of the way. This is the way we roll. Way? Way. It's true. Acts 22 and verse 4, Paul is telling this story and he goes, Yeah, I remember I used to persecute. This is what he said. He goes, I persecuted this way. And now he's living this way. I used to persecute. So guys, I just want to let you know something. Jesus Christ is the way that people need. And some of us, we met Jesus, and then you know what you end up doing? Listen to these verses in the Bible. Did you know you could faint in the way? You could go astray from the way? You could, people speak evil of the way. Right now, there's a bunch of political people speaking evil about the church. You know what I say to them? Screw them. The more guide people with problems, you don't have to listen to the Bible. Seriously. I need to watch my language today. Sorry. I feel like I'm getting ready to cuss. Make them straight, man. The ways of the Lord, right now they appear to be crooked because we make them straight. We're going to stand up at the God's word and say, straighten this garbage out. This is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We know the Bible. Jesus Christ is the way. And the church, guess what? We're this way. The church is. People got problems all over the place. And I'm not saying I can fix the transmission. you'll find out the issue ain't always the transmission. These people are sitting back. Their lives kind of are sucky. And the only thing he has to count on is this truck. 
And now all of a sudden his transmission went out and he says, what am I going to do? He needs a guide to say, I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to quit putting happiness and trust in a truck. And he'll go, well, no, Jesus Christ is the way. Well, Jesus Christ don't fix my transmission. Your transmission is not your problem. That's one itty-bitty problem. There's something so much bigger going on here. You're going to drink yourself sick over this issue. You've got a deeper problem, and you know what it is? We're born in sin. Guys, I know what fills an empty soul. I know what fills a heart. I don't know how to bake the best cake in the world, so I don't call myself a baker. But you know what I am? I'm a guy to show people the way, and people need that. They can reject it. It don't matter. See, we're all kind of like salespeople, but you know why I don't want to say salespeople? Because all of us think salespeople, yuck. Used car salesmen, gross, right? Oh, people that try to be slick and to push you, trying to get you. No, really, you need solar. You need solar panels around your house and on top. Of your, that's what you really need. I was like, hey, dude, sorry, I'm not interested, you know. And you know what he says? He goes, oh, I can only help people that will take my solar panels. I was like, you're exactly right. And I say no. Well, the stakes are you're going to pay a higher uh, power bill than your neighbor. And little does he know he's wrong. Because I've been stealing juice from my neighbor's patio for years. You know, really. Come on. We're the way. Guys, don't think yourself as a salesman. But if you really know that guy is lost and that guy is hurting, you really know that lady's about to be on the edge of a divorce. And, and you know, ladies are relational. You know, very relational normally. And if you look at the stats on divorces, you know who, who usually initiates most of divorces, don't you? Come on. Who is it? Male or female? You know why. Hey, and, hey look at the stats on this. Don't, don't tell me. Who do you think you are? You're beating up late. I'm not beating up late. No, you're just relational. And you, you discover quicker and you come to conclusions quicker that this relationship ain't making me happy. Something's wrong here. It ain't supposed to be like this. Sweetie, you are right, man. You are 100% right. But as your guide, there is a relationship that will make it right. I know the way. The way is Jesus Christ. Guys, you're not gross salespeople. You're literally rescuing people. People that don't have, they don't have a clue if they're on foot or horseback. You got the answers to rescue them. What, are they going to reject you? I'll just cry for them. I feel bad for them. Yeah, but people are going to think you're pushing. I'm not a salesman. I'm a guide, though. And the stakes are high. Because if they die without Jesus Christ, you know what the Bible says? Eternity in the lake of fire. Eternity in hell. The stakes are high here. So what do I have to lose? Come on, guides. Maple City Baptist Church. We're guides. People have problems, and they need a simple plan. That's what they need. We got the simple plan. Somebody's like, well, what's the plan? Uh, we've been talking about it for years. The way, the truth, the life. If they would meet Jesus and start on this journey, on this path, they would know the way. Then they'd start learning the truth and they would be convinced that everything they've been living for, the majority of it is a lie. It's not true. They're going to learn the truth of the Bible and it'll change their life forever. And all of a sudden they'll say, man, I was just some guy that, I mean, I was literally just a booger picker. That's what I did for a living. I was like, uh, I picked boogers. That's what I did. I can't believe now I'm guiding people's lives. I can't believe that people are like getting saved and meeting Jesus because of me. Ain't that crazy? It is crazy. You're a great guide because you've been on the journey and you want people to know. The problem is, you know why some of you aren't guides today? Because you're still sitting in your problems. See? Somebody go guide them. That's awful. Right? People need a guide. Guys, and it's not that I'm standing up here saying, guys, I have all the answers in the world. No, no, I know who does. That's why I'm pointing everybody to Jesus. Constantly I have people asking me questions about the Bible, and I constantly have to say, that's good, I Never thought about it. I, I, I don't know. Ain't you a pastor? Yeah, I guide people. 
I get them on there. You got the same Bible I do. You want me to do the hard work? You figure it out. You know, you dig a little bit. You know the way. So Jesus Christ is the way. People need to know the way. And, and you know what the next thing he says? He says, Jesus says, I am the way and I am what? The truth in a world. <coughs> I, I got a website. I use Google for my news sometimes. I got a page of news, even on my phone. I'll use it. And you can select what you like. Like, I don't care about this. Or I don't want to hear about that. I don't, you know, you can pick and select what you like, what you don't like. Oh, I don't care for celebrity news. Okay, yeah, you can uncheck that. Well, I got this news that comes by. And you know what's crazy? You know what they've added now on Google's new page? Fact checks. You'll go down, scroll down, and after a little bit of news and headlines and articles, they'll be like, here's something that got taught, you know, it was really famous this week. And it'll post something. And then it'll say, we fact-checked it. It's false. We fact-checked this, and it's true. I've been following NFL, you know, just free agency and all that type of thing. And so I'm not lying. I read something the other day that Tyree Kill left the Miami Dolphins. I'm like, no, I think he's under contract. I mean, he's, a, he's like the best wide receiver out there, one of them. And I was like, no. So I went to fact-check and found out. I'm like, that was not true. But I was getting ready to tell all my friends. Ain't that nuts? Yeah, it's nuts. Did you know you only use 10% of your brain? Who's heard that? Science has proven that's false. I believed it, though. You know, people are just smarter than me, I just figured. Did you know you can see the wall of China from space? Who's fact-checked that one? I've never been in space. They've proven that to be false, too. It's massive. It's big. Now, they can see it from space. If they get on their, you know, telescope that's that big around a mile and a half down there, there's the wall of China. Oh, okay, great, dude. But everybody always says that the wall of China is so massive you can see it from space. The astronauts say you can't. They're the ones that would know. It's just crazy to me the, the, the things that people say that we believe. Sugar makes kids hyperactive. Did you know that? Fact check me on that. Science says it's false. <clears throat> I could have swore I fed my kids sugar before and they got a little bit wound up. Maybe because they're pleasure senses. They say something up here. But the sugar? Do the research on that. I don't know. Hey, the ladies, don't shave with the razor, especially on your face, because, you know, hair comes back, you know, like thicker and fuller if you shave. That's false. Check, check, check me out on these. I'm, I'm serious. These are just common things that people just think, and they're just like, and my, my point in saying this is, you know, as you go through all this, you're like, hey, don't crack your knuckles. You're going to get arthritis. They've proven that's a lie. Why do we believe it? Because I annoyed my mother cracking my knuckles. She wanted me to believe it, you know. Hey, goldfish has a memory for three seconds. <laughs> false. There's goldfish that they've tested and said they had a memory of up some on certain things for three months. Can you believe that? I mean, I know Dory wasn't very bright, but she's not a goldfish. <laughs> right? Okay, all those silly things, all lies. They're not the truth, they're lies. And so you just believe when you're a little kid, you grow up, and you know what you think? Family's safe, ain't they? 90% of the abuse that happened to people happens because of a family member. That's why you were taken advantage of. Because you were gullible and believed it. It wasn't true. Family should be safe. I'm not saying we, we want them to be. Boy, if you don't get an education, you're not going anywhere. Okay. Over half the millionaires in this country do not have a college education. What are you going to do with that? I know you're trying to bribe your kids just to go to college, but you know some of your kids ain't cut out for college. It's all right. There's a lot of things out there to do, a lot of things. People, you know, like, I'd just be a little happier if I could make more money. I've got some raises through the years. My happiness meter didn't go up. Well, maybe that first check, you know, 
You're like, you're the first one. You're like, we're pulling it in now, ain't we? Well, what do you do? You always find a way to spend it. You always find a better vehicle. A better, and all of a sudden you're down and you're like, I think I might have been happier when I was making $21,000 a year. Life was simple. Now I'm trying to keep up, you know. Guys, I'm telling you, it's just lies, 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 and more lies. The Bible says that the human mind is reprobate and corrupt. Jesus Christ says, but I am the way and I am the truth. I am the truth. The Bible is not just a book that has some truth in it. There's a lot of things in culture that they have bits and pieces. Of, there's churches out there that I think are nasty, but they have bits and pieces of truth in them. This book is truth. There's a big difference. John 17 says, thy word is truth. Fact. Done. Truth. It don't matter what people think. The Bible says, there, all through history, you can look at people have challenged the Bible and taken, you know, they'll fight everything. And I, even science things, you know, like I'm down here, yeah, the, the earth is flat, you know, and here's why. And this, I'm like, but I, uh, did you not see that picture that astronaut t- took? Looked like a marble out there. But don't you believe that? You don't have to believe it. Read the book of Job. And it clearly just tells you. But people don't like to believe the Bible anymore. Man, Jesus is truth. Hey, guys, if this is truthful, you know what people do? They err from the truth. They turn from the truth. People want to change the truth. I'm I'm using all the Bible verses, but I'm not giving you the reference. People change the truth. The Bible says people are destitute of the truth. And even then when you give it to them, they'll resist it. They'll resist the truth. You know, you can't spank your kids. Well, who told you that? Well, well, no, seriously. It's just something that you can't do. All the abuse and stuff out there, you could get in deep trouble spanking. I don't know where you got that from, but the Bible clearly says there is a time when your kid is going to need lit up. They're going to need it. Pain's a great teacher, says every adult in this room that's hit their head a few times. (laughs) You learn, don't you? Why don't you touch that pan? Because I did when I was a kid. My mom was cooking soup. I was getting my Halloween costume on. She goes, get away from that pan. It's hot. She told me. I did not believe her. Boy, was she telling the truth. I blistered by two, two fingers. I blistered both of them going to all Halloween day. I was doing my thing, eating candy. I'm going, truth. It was hot, man. But people will turn from it. They'll resist it. They'll do anything to change it. And Jesus said this, I am the truth. Just because people don't believe it doesn't mean it's not true. He's the truth. And the truth will set you free. I've experienced freedom in my life. The spirit of truth. The Bible talks about the word of truth over and over again. The word of truth. That's right. So we worship him in spirit and in truth, right? So our worship is here. We were just having a conversation, me and a lady earlier. And we were talking about churches that do this certain thing. That, and you think, oh, you get closer to God. This is what you're supposed to do. I'm like, there's one problem with that. Uh, it's not found in the list of truths. You don't find that. But people want to believe it. Or they'll say this. You don't know what I've experienced it. You don't know, but I've experienced it. So what are you going to say about that? Facts and truth over your experience. Hmm. I'm going with the truth. You calling me a liar? Well, I'm not saying you didn't experience something. You know, I cannot argue that. It'd be like me up here telling you God spoke to me in a dream last night, and you guys are paying attention to me. I'd be careful of that. Well, there's a book of facts here. Why am I giving the facts from the Bible? I'm not saying I didn't have a dream and something happened to me. I woke up crying, thinking of my grandma. Ain't that crazy? What's that mean? I don't know. Quit eating so late at night. Makes you dream worse. You know, pizza and baked lays, man, they'll mess you up late at night. I'm just telling you the truth. People need the truth. People need to improve their vision. They can't see straight. You know, it's kind of crazy because 
you know, your, your blood, like you look at your veins and it's like blue. Blood's blue, but you know, you cut it open, it's supposed to oxygen, it turns red, right? I've just always thought that, but that's false too. Blood's always red. Looks blue. Yeah, it does look blue. The way the light's hitting, the way the skin's positioned, looks blue, don't it? So blood is blue. No, dude, it looks blue. It's red. I'm telling you, it's red. Fact check me on it. Go look. I'm not saying there ain't different shades of red at times, for sure. People have lost their minds today. And me and you are believers, and we know the truth. Why don't we guide people? That's our job, church. People got all these problems, and they believe all these ridiculous things. They just need a guide, somebody to come along. And you know, we in the church, we're experts. If you've walked with Jesus, if you've been even in discipleship, I know pastors that don't know that information. I've had pastors saying, I was like, well, I read here. Here's what I do. I read X amount a day, and every year I just always read from the beginning to the end. I just have all... Oh, really? I'm like, you haven't read the Bible? This guy is a pastor. Well, not like from beginning to end. I mean, I've studied. I'm like, oh, dude, what, what's wrong with you? That's jacked up, man. Jacked up. 1 Timothy 3.15 says, The church is the pillar and the ground of the truth. You're so crippled today in your mind. You're so broken in your corrupt thinking. You're just trying to think of how you're going to get your yard looking this way and get to work and got to get this done and accomplished. I don't know. I'm gonna, we think this way, all this type of stuff. And through all of it, through all of the busyness, we find ourselves being a little bit, a little bit crazy in the brain when the reality is God's like, listen, I'm trying to bring healing to your life. I want to be the guide, so he's going to show you the way is Jesus Christ, the truth is Jesus Christ, and then it'll change my life. And then it puts you in a position you forgot all about it. You're at work trying to make money, and I realize you got to do this, you got to nail this, you got to screw, you got to cut this wherever you work. Yeah, you got to produce for your company because that's how you're getting a paycheck. But you forgot the whole time you're at work because then you go on lunch break, you go into the, the break room, everybody's getting changed and washed up. You're going to all these places, and somehow you forget that God has you there as the guide to guide all of them. I worked for a company in Iowa, and I had the president of the company, the owner and the president, said. Hey, uh, preacher, the guy's called me preacher. So he said, preacher, can I talk to you for a minute and shut the door? I go and he's got this big throne of a desk. They shut the door. I sit down. He was asking me about life. I was able to share God's word with him. He got very emotional. He was actually going to this church. And I said, dude, listen, they're telling you wrong. The Bible don't back that, man. He was like, what do I do? I was like, what do you mean, what do you do? Run. Get out of that church. Yeah, but I grew up in this church. I don't care if you grew up in that church. Yeah, but I got family that goes to this church. If they're teaching the Bible and they're wrong, dude, I'd take the Bible over family. That almost sounds like heresy. Well, it's not heresy. It's actually heresy when it's done the other way. I kid you not. This guy, I've known him. I've been to his house. This guy is a multimillionaire. And here I was. Just a dude that day rolled a few hundred feet of curb. And when work was over, I walked in with dirt all over me and concrete on my pants. I walked in. I was his guide. I seen him over in all places over in Iowa. I was in Burlington at a restaurant. He's like, Mike Blake. And I turn around. Here's this guy. And he's like, he just wanted to hug me. You know, I'm like, oh, isn't that awesome? Guys, I'm not that bright. Being bright's not the issue. If you know the way, you know the truth, you, it changed your life and it can change other people's lives, why wouldn't you guide them? And there's people I guide, you know, I'm the guy that, oh man, that's a pilot. That guy can fly planes, man. Like, he's intelligent, he's got some skills. Yeah, that is a special skill set. <clears throat> but I also know there's a dingling out eating ho-hos in the parking lot. He's like, oh. What are you doing? I'm guiding a pilot 
And I'm guiding a whole plane. There's about 250 people on this plane. And if it ain't for me, it's very likely one of those wings are going to clip another plane. I got to get them straight. Oh, the guy knows where he's supposed to get. He's supposed to be on A13, and he's going to shoot down there and take off. But I'm the guy out there. Yeah, I'm just a knucklehead. I'm a Twinkie eater. Because I know. I know when the wheels hit that spot right there on the ground, I know that's when he better cut it or he's going to be in trouble. Hey, guys. And yeah, he's a pilot, and he makes about 10 times the money you do. But he needs guided. Yeah. Let's go. Church, let's guide people. They got problems, man. Let's guide them wherever we're at. That's some little invite cards back there. You guys know our church ain't the best. We ain't the fanciest. People's left us through that. Church has problems. I'm just like, I have never denied that. I've never denied that. And one, the truth is, I don't know a church that don't have issues, and you know why. And if a church was perfect, you know when it would get ruined? When me and you walk in their doors. That's when I know it's going to fall to pieces. Because here's a real human being, and I got some trouble. My gosh, let's walk in the truth. Church, the last thing he says is, I'm the life, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. And guys, if you're living your life without walking with Jesus Christ, you're just missing it. And this is the problem, church. We get so busy in our lives. We're doing our business. We got things to do. We, we, our lives are so chaotic and so busy. We just forget. Your main job in life, I'm telling you, God has given you a great purpose. Most, that's what this life is. Most people don't have a life. So somebody could be making $125,000 a year and people say, dude, get a life. What's that mean? He's lame. She's lame. Money don't change that. You know? If you're a knucklehead, whether you have 100 bucks in your pocket or 10000 in your pocket, you're a knucklehead. Right? It's just true, isn't it? Jesus Christ is the way. He's the truth. He's the, he's the life. What I found is people today, the biggest problem people have is they're all bound up. It started with sin, I know that. But it, it, they're all bound and entwined and tied up with what matters least. The least of things have got them concerned. Things that don't matter. Yeah, but it matters to them. Hey, I get that. I, you know, I can get as touchy-feely as you want to get on this thing. But at the end of the day, there's things that matter most. There's the place we're supposed to guide people. Just because the guy at work has a better truck than you in the parking lot. He's on a second wife and getting ready to lose her. He's developed some habits in his life that he can't seem to break. And you're just like, well, who am I? I'm just a janitor there. Hey, dude, that's how you're making money. You're sweeping floors and scrubbing toilets. There's nothing wrong with that. Do what you got to do to get some money and pay your bills. That's noble. The problem is when you walk in as a believer in Jesus Christ and you forget that day, you forget that you're the guide of the whole company. You're guiding people's lives. Everywhere you go, the lady at the gas station, your boss, and, and it ain't just like, it's not just like, uh, you want to come to church with me? Maybe you ought to tickle their problem a little bit. Hey, dude, the other day, uh, we got off work, and I remember you said uh, you'd rather just stay and work a couple more hours. Dude, that kind of broke my heart like you didn't want to go home. And she'll tell you, it's hell at home. There's the problem. They just need a simple plan. Guys, it's so simple. My brother rejected it for years. My brother was addicted to heroin. He rejected it for years. He goes, sounds too simple. Somebody could just pray a prayer and their life would be different. I'm like, I'm not saying there ain't growth. I mean, once you, you find Jesus Christ, you got to grow. That's the way. you got to learn the truth, the Bible. And you'll figure out the truth, and it'll show you what the lies are out there. Because it's filled with it. You know all these conspiracy theories out there. You know what makes it so weird? I don't want to get off on all that because you get crazy on yourself. But you know why they exist? 
Because there's a chunk of truth in all of it. Because we live in a world of lies, man. That's, that's, but we got a book of truth. And so I don't care if they're more successful. It doesn't matter what vehicle they drive. It doesn't matter if you're a toilet scrubber. Just don't be a toilet licker. You're a guide. And don't feel bad at all going over and just saying, hey, dude, I just wanted you to know something. I know it's none of my business, and I don't know you very well, ma'am. But last week when you said that, man, I've been praying for you. How is your daughter? She's all right. Okay. Yeah, it might not be none of my business. I just want you to know, though, that uh, and you become the guide. You just confidently step up and just say, here's the deal. And it's, like I said, there's some marketing and some sales in this that almost sound gross. But it's not gross if you're solving a problem, is it? It's not gross if you're rescuing people. Jesus Christ is the way. Way? Way. He's the truth. Truth? Truth. He's the life. This is exactly where people live. And me and you, position yourself. Position yourself as the guide. Let's guide them. Let's take them. Let's give them the business, man. That's what we're going to do. And somebody will say, somebody told me the other day, somebody was invited to this church and they're like, don't go to that church because, and they brought up something. I'm just like, that problem that they brought up, I would never deny it. I'm, I'm telling you, guys, I got to wash my underwear every week. I mean, different pairs every week. I don't wear the same ones all week. You know why? Because I'm a human. Every one of us, when you don't bathe and do active things to clean yourself up, every one of us are gross, man. And that's just the skin and the outside. If you want to dig a little deeper inside of human brains and human hearts. Crazy. This world's crazy. It's crazy because I'm in it. I think I'm crazy. Hey, I was crazy. I just want you to know I am completely grounded. Completely. Your kids, that issue there, oh, that's a simple solution. It really is simple. It's going to be hard to do. It's true. It's so funny. I'm telling you, I talk to people all the time, and they're just, life's busy. It'll slow down soon. Hey, get, you're a liar, man. It's never going to slow down. Never. I thought, man, my kids are out of the house. Me and Becky, man, we're free, ain't we? Last week we were home one night. And that's going to change this week. You can't live that way all the time. <laughs> you can't. It'll, it'll wreck your life. You need times where you're home and you're still. and The, the floors do need vacuum. I mean, that stuff has to happen. But, hey, gang, what we're going to do is people got problems. We're going to guide them with a simple plan, the way, the truth, the life. That's simple, isn't it? I, I, I'm so simple, I, I've been even thinking about the Maple City Baptist Church. We're MCBC, ain't they? MCBC, here's what you do. MCBC, meet Jesus Christ. M, C, come to church. You got to get your butt in church and be around people that are going to guide and help you and teach you this book. That's C. And then B, guess what? You better be baptized. That's your obedience. You're going to start taking steps forward, right? You're going to get it. You're going to start believing the book and you'll get baptized. And then see, if you'll continue on this journey, you're going to find yourself hitting a spot. And when most people get sick and tired, here's what happens to people. You get to the spot in your Christian life where you're like, same thing, different day. I had a guy tell me, he goes, dude, your message is the same over and over again. I've listened to you for years. And this is, he left our church and he told me, so he goes, I keep hearing the same thing week after week. Just, like, you know, it would all change. It would all be different if you would drain your fuel tank and guide people during the week. Because you'd want to come in this place and be with us people. You'd want to come in here and hear some word, man, and get tanked up. The problem is you're not a guide. You're going to sit in your wounds the rest of your life. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. What we want to do is put the cone of shame on you, man. Quit it. Picking at your wounds. They need to heal. It don't mean they'll ever be forgotten. I do know that. Some of you have been abused and hurt and tore up because you believed all the lies. But now what you need to do is you need to guide young girls, man. You've been so hurt and abused. We need you to become a guide to young girls. 
Some of you men, we need you because younger men, we need you to walk in the room and say, hey, knock that off. People say, well, who are you? I'm the guy that's going to tell you what to do. That's who I am. And they get quiet. I'm not their daddy. But truth be known, half of them might not have one. My gosh, we are so set up. Next week, if we would all leave this place and say, I'm going to look at people's problems, I'm going to be the guide. Never thought I could be that because my wife's pretty broken. Yeah, but we can tell people, like, hey, I, do, I know it works. I know the path. I'm on the path. I'm telling you what you need it. You need it. And some of you are sitting back. You're still going to, what's your, your life going to be any better? It's not going to be any better. You need a guide. And what people need to do is they need to say, hey, I'm going to buy into that simple plan. Give us a year. Your life will be changed forever. I promise you. Jesus, thanks for the word today. Lord, I'm thankful for a room just filled with godly people. Lord, people that are just busted and broken, they came to you. And Lord, you've given them health. You've given them, Lord, they know the way. They know you. They know the truth. They know you. And their life is so different. They have life inside of them because of you. God, I pray we live this, leave this place with a confidence that we are the guide. We are the light in this dark world. That we would go out from here and tell people about the great I am because people are lost. They're confused. They're anxious. They're so depressed. They don't know how they're going to live another week. They don't know how they're going to get through another school year. Lord, a lot of people live this way and we have got peace. God, I pray we leave with confidence, set ourselves up as this guide. It's in your name we pray. Amen.